U.S. private equity firm Bain Capital is the new owner of Virgin Australia after the majority of creditors voted in favour of the $3.5 billion sale. Virgin Australia has been one of the biggest corporate casualties of the coronavirus crisis, making a third of its workforce redundant. For more, I'm joined by Geoffrey Thomas, the aviation editor at The West Australian. Geoffrey Thomas, good to talk to you this evening. This is a formalisation of the takeover of Virgin Australia. Is this the best? deal that it could have got? Oh, look, absolutely, particularly considering the COVID-19 landscape for the aviation industry, where it, it is expected that this financial year, the industry, industry is going to lose 84 billion US dollars. Um, getting 3.5 billion for Virgin Australia is an amazing deal. And, and obviously, Bain Capital is taking a very long term view um, of the aviation landscape and, um, and and certainly they've picked up a very, very good airline, one of the best in the world. Um, so, yeah, I think it's the best deal that could have been done. Creditors were overwhelmingly in favour of this deal. Unions were key to that. What were the union's demands? Well, the union's demands were essentially to keep as many staff in place as possible and then those who are being made redundant would get all their entitlements, which is what Bain has agreed to do. Now, there were 9,000 Virgin Australia staff. Uh, Bain is keeping 6,000 on, so 3,000, unfortunately, sadly, lose their jobs. However, at the same time, they have said that they expect within 12 months, possibly longer, to be re-employing uh, at least 2,000 of those to end up with a staff roster of about 8,000 staff. So considering, as I said earlier, the landscape uh, that we now are in with COVID-19 and the border closures and the international borders shut, um, this is a really, really good deal for the Virgin staff. Um, mind you, I, I believe they really deserve it because they're a tremendous group of people and arguably the best in the world at what they do. So it's a, it's a real asset that uh, Bain has purchased. So you're confident there won't be further job cuts that in fact some of those workers will be rehired? Look, I'm confident going forward. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of dynamics out there. Uh, we've still got the borders closed, but at the same time, we've got some very exciting things happening with the Abbott Laboratories uh, fire a 15-minute COVID-19 test um, coming onto the market. We've also got some very positive news on the vaccine front. So hopefully by the first quarter of next year, uh, some normality is going to return at least to the domestic network. And I'm hoping uh, in the second and third quarters, uh, we'll, we'll see a return to international flying. Yeah, because Qantas has said that it's not anticipating international travel until the second half of 2021. Look, that's indeed their planning number. Uh, however, if uh, uh, Alan Joyce uh, was uh, said yesterday, in fact, at a, a Kappa conference, um, that uh, uh, we could well um, see it earlier. Uh, he, he has holds great hope for this uh, COVID-19 test kit, um, which would remove the necessity for quarantining. And that's a big impediment to travel. The quarantine, 14 days, that's a major obstacle. Uh, with this COVID-19 test kit, uh, that could be eliminated. He holds great hope for that. So it could well be that Qantas may revise its plans uh, early into the new year and bring forward that international travel um, date of the 1st of July next year. How big an appetite do you think there is for international travel? Look, I think there's an enormous appetite for both international and domestic travel because, I mean, there's people want to go touring for, for number one. But number two, we've got the family and friends and loved ones. We, we've got a population divided at the moment right across this country. Uh, people are hankering to, to see loved ones. Uh, we've got the business community as well. I mean, while we've had Zoom and Skype and other things and Teams, other online, there's nothing like being face to face with somebody. Uh, for business meetings. So I think there's an enormous pent-up demand. Uh, what we need to remove is, uh, are the quarantine issues um, and, and then we can, we can get moving. And uh, so I think there's a big pent-up demand. 
Just a final question on Virgin Australia. Have the new owners said anything about the deal to purchase Boeing's 737 MAX jets? Those planes were grounded before the pandemic because of their involvement in two deadly plane crashes. Look, they haven't actually d discussed that. The, the, the delivery of those was put off uh, last year, in fact, uh, well into, I think it's 2023, 2024. Um, my sense on that, in actual fact, um, and this may be a little bit left field, is that they will swap those airplane orders for Boeing 787s to relaunch their international services. Um, and I believe, in fact, that Boeing is going to look at designing a new airplane to replace the MAX. Uh, they've been, they were thinking about it anyway. Um, so I think we might see quite a bit of movement in that order, initially swap for 787s, and then uh, uh, Virgin would order uh, another new aircraft from Boeing to replace its 737s. A lot of change in the aviation sector. Good to talk to you about it, Geoffrey Thomas. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure, Karina.